Hi, I'm Mike Ma, Managing Director of FinTech here at Nextcubed. I wanna say welcome and thank you for joining us for our first ever FinTech Showcase. It means the world to us that you're here. And I say this because, you know, we at Nextcubed are fully aware of the time we're living in. From COVID still keeping us locked down at home, our loved ones afflicted to racial injustice, unfortunately still seen to be alive and well. These are troubling times. So that you took any part of your day to spend it with us, I mean it when I say thank you. Now, despite all this, I'd like to say we're very excited and bullish about the opportunity about FinTech, where we are in the world today. I say this not just because it's a great business opportunity, but really examining and building things at the intersection of money and technology can portend great things about what the world should be like. So I'm not gonna tell you anything we do compares to what's happening on the front line for those fighting for justice or, or those on the front line of healthcare. That'd be silly. But I will share with you that in addition to building awesome companies, and you'll hear about that part yourself, um, these founders over 16 weeks have impressed me at, as, as awesome people. And, and I say this because I'd like you to lend an ear, not just to the, the decks and the pitches and, and the opportunities which are, which are indeed compelling, but I want you to lend an ear to some of the stories that led these founders to where they are today. You're gonna hear stories about the need to create tight communities. You're gonna hear stories about bringing transparency and light to where there's previously darkness. You're gonna hear stories about people and companies giving the underdog a fighting chance. So in short, they've not just, uh, I haven't helped them, they've helped me. They've inspired me to be a little better and I hope they share that with you today in addition to, to their businesses. So speaking of inspiration, I'd like to take this time to invite a guy who inspires me, our CEO, Marlon Evans, to come and say hello. Marlon, would you come say hi to everybody? Thanks, Mike. I just wanted to add my thanks to everyone joining us for our FinTech Showcase. As Mike shared, the events surrounding the showcase are not lost on us. So we truly appreciate you carving out the time to hear from our startup community. If you're watching this video, you likely share our entrepreneurial spirit. I came across a definition of entrepreneurship recently. It read, entrepreneurship is the pursuit of opportunity beyond resources control. The pursuit of opportunity beyond resources control. This idea of setting out on a journey, committed to see it through, yet knowing you're gonna need help from others along the way, in order to cross the finish line, lies at the heart of what we do at Nextcubed. We come alongside entrepreneurs and help accelerate their efforts by connecting them with corporate partners, investors, subject matter experts, advisors, the Nextcube community. We bring critical resources to the entrepreneur such that they're able to focus on the pursuit rather than what's not in their control. We believe in a community approach because we know it works. The will of the few is only as strong as how many people it compels to action. There was no Black Lives Matter movement striving for systemic reform until there was one. There is no cure or treatment for COVID until we create one. When it comes to embracing new ideas and driving innovation, only community can truly bridge the gap between if and when. A community rallying around an idea leads to momentum, and momentum leads to an air of inevitability. So while it might be difficult to grasp over a video, we hope you can feel the momentum building behind each and every one of the startups that are presenting today. And we hope you will consider ways you might accelerate their efforts whether that be through advice, feedback, customer introductions, investment, 
especially investment, just remember, a little by little leads to a lot. It is now my pleasure to introduce Kieran Quackenbush, who's our FinTech Program Director. She will walk you through the showcase agenda and the viewing logistics. Thanks again for joining us and enjoy the show. Thank you all so much for joining. We're super excited to have you here. Uh, just a quick reminder before we jump into the pitches, if you're not on Slack, that's definitely where the party is. We're communicating through that. The founders and teams are standing by in real time to be able to chat with you, answer any of your questions. And after the pitches are over, we'll be opening up Zooms where you'll be able to jump on and chat with the founders face-to-face -face as well. But with that, I'd like to turn it over and introduce you to Parker Graham, founder and CEO of Destiny. Hello everyone, my name is Parker Graham and I am the co-founder and CEO of Destiny. Small community banks and credit unions comprise 99% of all banks, provide more than 60% of all small business loans and are deeply invested in the customers they serve. In a lot of ways, they're the last true dealers of the American dream. Sadly, they're getting lapped by the big four banks, neo banks, and other fintechs. While they comprise most of the banks in this country, the reality is community banks control very little of the money. The largest 20 banks now control over 70% of all assets, devote only 18% of their loan portfolios to small businesses, and are spending massive amounts of money to improve their technology in-house and grow their platforms. Community banks simply do not have the resources or in-house talent to be able to compete efficiently in this new market. The result of those inefficiencies? Community banks no longer understand one of their most important bases, their young and digital first customers. They don't understand their technology needs, problems they face, or really where to even start to serve them. In fact, 44% of young people left their community bank last year for a competitor for one reason only, to find better personal financial management tools. Not just a personal financial management tool, but a better one. You see, I understand this better than most because I've actually experienced it. As a former community bank manager, I know exactly what it's like to try to help these customers with outdated technology and solutions that do not fit their needs. I can't even begin to describe how frustrating it was to see the problems my younger customers were facing and have no service or tools to really help them in those critical moments. That's until I realized this problem is actually the solution in disguise. You see, not only can community banks help their younger customers get out of these crazy financial times, but they can actually make more revenue and increase loyalty by doing so. Unfortunately for both parties, there's still that technological disconnect, a bridge needing to be built. Well, we, my friends, we are that bridge. Destiny is a customer engagement platform that helps community banks and credit unions guide their younger customers out of debt, while at the same time helping them identify, leverage, and capture more revenue with those customers. Our platform is made of two different parts. The first is that crucial personal financial management tool that customers have been searching for. We call it our debt robo-advisor. The community bank's customers download this in the app store, select their bank, tell us some information about their finances, and then Destiny goes to work helping them get out of debt as fast as possible. Its entire job is to delight, engage, and identify the bank's most opportunistic young customers. Now, as you can imagine, there's a ton of data flowing in that debt robo-advisor, and the community banks need to be able to parse out what's important and actionable. That's why we built the Banker's Tool. The Banker's Tool is the second component of our platform, and it helps our banks visualize all of their customers, their opportunities, and competitor data. It functions a lot like a CRM tool and can help determine which customers they should focus on for certain opportunities. The result for our banks is the ultimate nirvana in banking, an increase in their revenue with their younger and now more engaged customers. While COVID-19 has caused issues for most startups, the proof of our platform's importance is skyrocketing. We now have over $40 million in debts being managed on our platform and over 1,000 users in our debt robo-advisor. Even as the financial system was squeezed harder than ever before, in just five short months, we have moved to late stages with four institutions, totaling a probability weighted ARR of $250,000, and we should close that first five-figure deal in the next few weeks. To date, we've built all of Destiny's traction in Kansas City, our own backyard, and our success hasn't gone unnoticed. This year, we were named a top five innovator for credit unions from the Heartland Credit Union Association and a top 10 startup to watch in 2020 by Startland News. All of that success though, it's really just the tipping point. We are now ready to take Destiny to the rest of the country, and this is how we're gonna do it. In addition to continuing direct sales in community banks and credit unions, we are also working on distribution partnerships with three of the five largest core providers in the country. Those are banking software conglomerates and two regional credit union associations, which are groups of credit unions. 
Each partnership grants us entry into new geographic regions and also creates unique revenue opportunities for us. The core provider partnerships give us automatic integration to thousands of community banks and hundreds of thousands of their end users at the flip of a switch. At the same time, the association partnerships are reseller agreements where the associations bundle hundreds of their institutions for access to our platform for one price. Both routes will help us grow and scale revenue even faster over the next 12 months. Now, I keep saying us because I am not on the stage or in the seat uh, alone today. I'm very lucky and blessed to have two tremendous technical co-founders, one of which I've known for 20 years, and the other is one of the best backend architects you could hope to meet. We are also blessed to have a great financial advisory board, which is comprised of both technologists and bankers from the big four banks all the way down to the regional counterparts. All that being said, I'm really excited to announce that we are opening a round of $500,000. We already have committed investors in this round, and we'd love for you to be a part of it. With this raise and your help, we will finally be able to give community banks and credit unions a fighting chance. We were built for this moment, and we hope you will join us. Thank you. I'd like to bring up Definer next, but before I do, please check the links around you. There's a Slack conversation going on where you can meet the founders of any of the companies today and other investors. So somewhere around here, uh, have a look. Uh, there's gonna be an opportunity to connect. So I'd like to bring up Definer next. They've built some really amazing technology about building a one of the first fully automated decentralized lending platforms. So Jason, please say hello. Hi everyone, this is Jason, the founder and CEO of Definer, a decentralized finance innovator. I still remember clearly, a few years ago, when I graduated from college, earned my first paycheck, I'm super excited, like any other millennials. However, soon I realized there is a problem. All of my savings sit in my bank account and earn zero interest. Zero interest. And it's not only my problem. But generations problem is a problem for billions of people and businesses. On the flip side, people who are looking for a loan, they still have a high cost of capital, such as small medium-sized business. This is all because we have financial intermediaries sitting in between and earn trillions of dollars away from us. Even consumers earn zero interest. Small medium-sized business hardly get a loan. We need a change and make the money work for you, not for others. Three years ago, when I get to know blockchain technology, a immutable global available data network, I was also starting my CFA, have a much better understanding about the global financial network. This is the birth of Defender, a true peer-to-peer -peer network for digital assets savings, loans, and payments. Within our solutions, users can manage their digital asset through our digital wallet, such as Bitcoin, Ethereum, deposit and earn natural interest, typically around 3 to 7%. Get a loan quickly, pay each other easily. We all connected together without even financial intermediaries. Let's take a look how it really works. When you come to our platform, it's available through the web and mobile. Now, let's take a look at the web. When you come to the platform, you can come to the loan section if you want to get a loan. And after that, you can browse in all the current available loans. If you want to lend, you choose I want to lend. If you want to borrow, you choose I want to borrow. In this case, let's take you to how you can borrow as a small medium-sized business. Come here. Scanning all available loans, choose the one fit for you, or you can submit a request to customize it. Then hit accept. Now all of your requested has been written and deployed on the blockchain get filled within three days. Simple, right? Within our business, we don't make any upfront fees. We do profit sharing. Lenders provide capitals directly to the borrowers. Borrowers contribute back the interest and profit. Defender only share 10%. I 
and return 90% back to the lenders. Compared with our competitors, we provide the safest environment and highest returns. With our non-custodian, fully automated solutions, users don't need to worry about counterparty risk, cybersecurity risk, default risk. Meanwhile, they earn higher returns and full ownership. In this way, borrowers has much lower cost. Lenders have much higher returns. All of the profit and ownership belongs to the community. The decentralized finance industry is shooting to the moon. For the past one year, the asset under management within this industry has grown 10 times and is keep growing and anticipate growth to be a trillion dollar industry within the next few years. Defender is part of this since beginning. In over a little bit, two years time frame, we have started a company, launched our DeFi loans product, and now prepare our next launch of our DeFi savings product. We closed our pre-seed run early this year, now focusing on building our DeFi savings product. After that, we are targeted to kick off our seed run fundraising early September. Defender is also mentioned through all the mainstream media and named one of eight fintech startups in US to watch out in 2020 by fintech news. We cannot achieve this without our awesome investors such as Nextcube, Techstar, Blockchain Founders Fund. Also, we cannot make this happen without our awesome teams. From young men leadership to technology leaders, we have built successful and expertise in blockchain application, smart contract security. We are looking for people to join us, Definer, to build the future of open finance together with us. Please come talk to me if you are looking for fintech startup like us. We are looking for touching base with investors. Thank you. Next up, I'd like to bring up earn.re. Again, please join us on Slack. I think the most important thing is you can connect to our founders and the companies here. They're waiting for you live to meet with you one-on-one -on -one and answer your questions face-to-face -face or in a Slack channel. Now, Earn has built an amazing platform that's bringing safety, liquidity, and transparency to the commercial real estate market. Aaron, would you please say hello to everybody? Hi, my name is Aaron Lohman, and I'm the CEO of Earn.re, a marketplace for real estate-backed securities. I've spent the last 12 years working as a commercial real estate developer and general contractor. And over that time, I've gained a unique perspective of the pain points involved in raising money for commercial real estate. Frankly, over the last 12 weeks, those pain points have been exponentially magnified due to the effects of COVID. The process for raising money for real estate projects is incredibly difficult, involving lots of travel and face-to-face -face meetings. It's time-consuming, taking up to six months in many cases to complete a transaction. It's very risky from a legal and compliance perspective, and it costs a ton of money with legal, advisory, marketing, and intermediary fees oftentimes out of control, and typical issuances for single properties sometimes exceeding hundreds of thousands of dollars. The process isn't any easier for investors. Filtering through numerous opportunities, tracking communications, and pouring over unreliable data rooms can amount to a lot of wasted time and missed opportunities. To make things worse, after making an investment, the investor's money is tied up for years, severely limiting their flexibility. We estimate that because of these friction points, an average of $160,000 is wasted on each financing transaction. And by introducing technology to the equation, the US real estate industry would save upwards of $10 billion each year. Earn eases the pain. It simplifies compliant fundraising with online investor roadshows ready-made and fully compliant securities templates, automated marketing tools, and an emerging community of pre-screened investors.
cap tables and investor distributions are fully automated and data room content is authenticated using cryptographic technology. Investors now have the ability to analyze opportunities and deploy capital effectively. Real estate securities on the EARN platform are represented by unique digital tokens that provide enhanced tracking, security, and efficiency. With EARN, investors now have full control of their investments at all times, enjoy enhanced security and transparency, and can trade their position on demand with certainty and security. By digitizing their securities, EARN's users enjoy significantly lower costs and higher returns than those of traditional methods. On average, issuers save between $25,000 and $150,000 per transaction, and investors de-risk their position and protect their expected returns. The U.S. market for commercial real estate securities is enormous. At more than $9.7 trillion with nearly $500 billion of new money invested in the space each year, technology is now at a point where the complexities of real estate finance can be automated and trading can be scaled. Here's how we know the business is working. We recently launched Earn in April of this year, and we already have our first client issuing $20 million in real estate-backed debt securities on the platform, resulting in expected revenues for Earn of approximately $350,000. Total issuances this year are forecasted at $50 million, and revenue of approximately $1.7 million is forecasted for 2020. In addition, $130 million of issuance volume is forecasted in 2021, with revenues expected to reach more than $12 million. Others have attempted to address these problems, but have failed to impact the market in a meaningful way due to regulatory compliance hurdles, lack of industry knowledge, limited usability, and legal and technological challenges. With decades of relevant experience, EARN understands real estate. We've built a system that ensures user compliance and our cutting edge technology uniquely addresses the obstacles associated with trading real estate securities. EARN's software is free of charge for qualified users. As a marketplace, EARN makes money by charging fees for facilitating certain transactions like new issuances and servicing and trading securities. Our founding team is comprised of industry professionals with over 100 years of combined relevant experience. And our customers include institutional investors, banks, property owners and developers, and accredited investors here in the United States. Our go-to-market strategy accounts for current market challenges. Under normal conditions, new construction and value-add acquisitions are a driving force behind volume on the EARN platform. However, during current market downturns like the one that we're about to enter, EARN continues to provide value to the industry by facilitating secondary trade of distressed bank paper. In fact, the first trades on the EARN platform consist of bundles of toxic bank debt. EARN is poised to disrupt the global real estate market and position itself as a pillar in the industry. There's never going to be a better time to get involved than now. We're forecasting explosive growth in the near future and we love to have those that share our vision on board as early stage investors to join us in that success. Our current seed round for $1.5 million already has more than $1 million committed. Please join us today as we permanently change the way the multi-trillion dollar world of real estate is financed. Thank you. Next up is AI Capital Research. But before I have them begin, please join us on Slack, meet with our founders one-on-one, -on -one, and connect with the larger community. AI Capital Research is doing some really innovative things in an area I know and love well, asset management. Marshall, would you please come to the stage? Hi everyone, my name is Marshall Chang, and I'm the founder and CEO of AI Capital Research. Our story starts with AlphaGo, the most prominent AI accomplishment in our generation. The board game Go is considered to be the crown jewel of AI challenge because it's so complex, it has more possible gameplays than the number of atoms in the universe. Unlike Deep Blue that solved chess in the 90s, not a single move in AlphaGo is programmed by human. Instead, it's learned from millions of gameplays from us and from playing against itself. This is achieved with an algorithm called Deep Reinforcement Learning. Watching the AlphaGo beat our champion in 2015, I got hooked immediately. 
As a long-time FX trader, I wonder how this will forever change trading, a field that I'm deeply passionate about. To me, trading is very much another game to be sold. Quantitative trading has always been a dynamic industry where the brightest ideas and newest technology shines. But the quants today, they're not new to the complex models. In fact, we've been using them for quite a while already. What sets AlphaGo apart is the reinforcement learning. Unlike the more well-known supervised and unsupervised learning that finds static relationship between data sets, RL by design is to find dynamic policies in an ever-changing environment. However, applying it to complex decision-making process is still an advanced field for AI, not to mention trading the financial markets. But to build an offer goal for the, for the trading does sound a lot like the future of our industry. With this goal, we went all in developing our system since 2016. I recruited my two partners, Cameron and Duncan, who share the same passion in trading and AI with me. Cameron has been a researcher at the Philadelphia Federal Reserve and is pursuing an economics PhD in macroeconomics. Naturally, RL becomes his research passion. Duncan has been a portfolio manager at an equity market neutral fund for two years and understands firsthand how RL can change quant on both the alpha and risk side. We set our eyes on solving the FX market first, a market that I know intimately because I've been trading it for the past eight years. From 2016 to 18, we were coding and testing our RL environment, training our agent to learn everything about the market. As in the video, in the beginning, the RL agent has no idea what prices mean and what buying and selling even means, so it's just randomly placing trades. But through trial and error, it gradually figures out what it means to buy and sell from the reward it gets. It learns to meticulously see like direction, entrance, and to cut losses faster while let winnings run longer, all through millions of trades placed on its own. By the end of 2018, our RL agents were able to achieve consistent out-of-sample performance for 26 major and cross-currency pairs, and we have officially built our flagship Alpha FX AI. Since last year, in preparation for launching our fund, we opened our institutional trade ac account on CurrentX Interbank ECN and started collecting high-frequency trade data. By now, we have successfully tested our risk management and execution fix engines through prop trading, and now we're in the process of a CPO fund launch. Quant trading is a huge field with over a trillion dollars under management today and makes up 34% of total hedge fund industry. There are real pain points in different markets and different quant strategies that can be relieved with our RL. We realize that launching our fund and scale our FX trading is only one way to exploit our AI. We can offer our models and expertise to benefit lots of investment firms that already had scale capital, and most importantly, the data, yet lack the in-house RL expertise. We looked into the field of equity market neutral trading and found that lots of the signals are still rule-based and use fixed entry threshold and allocations. In the volatile regime shifting times, such as this year with COVID-19, we're seeing diminishing returns for lots of funds. Therefore, we started applying RL AI to optimize pair trading strategies through allocation and risk management. As in this video, the red NAV is a signal's performance into the COVID months, and the green one is the same strategy with our RL allocator. We learned that our RL agent can pick up the regime shifts early on and allocate accordingly to avoid the huge downturns. With our experience with IFX, we're quickly able to generalize sustainable improvements to hundreds of pair trading strategies. So we named this alpha spread, and it is the first of our many RL solution offerings in the pipelines. Early this year, we launched AICR outside of our investment management company with NextCube. So far, we have reached out to more than 30 funds and generated interest and traction with some established names in the industry. Right now, we are at a stage where our technology is mature and we want your help to scale. So either you are a potential investor, a fund manager, or just curious about our AI, we're inviting you to be part of this journey. Thank you. Next up is Predictable. But again, before we get into the next pitch, please join us on Slack, meet founders one-on-one, -on -one, either in Slack channel or face-to-face -face in a special Zoom room. You can also connect to other investors and join in other conversations. 
Now I'm excited about Predictable because they were the most recent addition to our FinTech cohort. They're bringing transparency to the health insurance marketplace and giving customers a voice. They also connect the two parts of vertical practices here at NextCubed, digital health and FinTech. So Sarah, please say hello to everyone. My name is Sarah Michaelchuk, and I'm the founder and CEO of Predictable. Let's talk about one of the most expensive things that 90% of Americans participate in, health insurance. It costs $20,000 a year to insure the average American family, only $7,000 if you're just getting it for yourself. Now, you might pay for all of that, or you may not pay for it at all, but what are you getting for those premiums? So you have a plan where you have to pay the first $3,000 in charges yourself for any doctor visits you might have, and then a percentage of every other charge after that. But hey, don't worry, you can't spend more than $16,000 in a year. That is, unless your doctor doesn't take your insurance at all. Predictable is a tool that helps you compare your real options and select the right health insurance to make sure that you're not getting screwed especially when you have something big going on in your life, like a wedding, a birthday, or a baby. We know that when you're shopping for health insurance in the United States, it doesn't look like just comparing all of the different plans and seeing what the cheapest premium is. Sometimes it looks like I've got this job offer and I really want to take it, but I'm afraid to leave my job at the big company because I've always been told it has amazing benefits. So what am I actually giving up? Or it might look like my girlfriend has three part-time jobs and none of them give her health insurance. So we're gonna legalize our relationship so that she can go on to my health insurance. Now, both of these situations are real and Predictable is the only place that will help you compare all of your options and make the right choice for you. So let's see how it works. Now, whether your children are 10 years old or if it is going to be 10 or more years before you even think about having children, we can help you. But for purpose of this example, we're going to start with pregnancy. So we have a NextCubed employee who's planning to have a baby using an out-of-network OBGYN. So she's gone on the PPO plan. And she's just learned that it's going to cost $17,000 and is thinking, well, maybe if I upgrade to the platinum HMO plan, that's going to be better. But actually, it's still $11,000. So she can scroll and drill down and figure out all the itemized charges that are driving those thousands of dollars in bills. And maybe she's going to come to the conclusion that it isn't worth it to splurge for that out-of-network doctor. And she should just pay the $500 copay uh, to stay in network. And we know she's going to have more questions, which is why we offer consultations and we're with you every step of the way until you make the right decision for you. The opportunity is huge. We are the first fee-based health insurance broker in the United States. Now, a lot of people and companies will compare health insurance quotes for you, but do you know how they get paid? They are paid by the insurance companies as a percentage of the premiums that you pay. We are paid by you, so we are completely aligned with you. We feel fine recommending products that have low commissions for us or no commissions, like your employer plan. Starting at just $60 a year, you can get unlimited advice tailored to your needs and any changes that might happen in your life. Now today, that's a $10 billion market. But eventually, that will also get the attention of the health insurers, who are currently paying billions in dollars in commissions to middlemen that your HR managers use who you don't even see. Now, I know your next question is going to be, would anyone actually pay for this? And the answer is yes. We have just started acquiring our first wave of paying customers in the wake of COVID-19. Since launching our product 60 days ago, our revenues have tripled. Now, we're saving our users an average of $3,500 in the first year they use the product. But more importantly, 
we're saving them hours of research time as they make this agonizing choice. We've helped people decide to take a job offer or turn down a bad one. We've helped them decide when to get pregnant. We helped them deal with gaps in coverage related to COVID-19. And we've helped them not worry about planning for their 26th birthday party because they're going to get kicked off of their parents' health insurance. Before I started Predictable, I spent eight years advising insurance company CEOs and CFOs. And what I found was that the same depth of analysis we would give to a public company CFO was exactly what I needed myself to evaluate my own health insurance. I was an employee at a large investment bank, and I didn't have the right tools to be able to use my own high deductible plan. So I began building a company and recruiting the right people who could help me level the playing field. My lead technical advisor, Carla Geiser, spent 12 years at Google before leading the rescue of healthcare.gov in 2014. As part of our next cute relationship, we're thrilled to have Mike Ma. With his background at Vanguard, Bank of America, and Betterment, he's taking a true hands-on role in getting our customer acquisition efforts off the ground. So far, we've raised $400,000 and we're gearing up for the busiest time of the insurance year when most consumers will have a new choice to make and a really short deadline to make it on. We are looking to add a talented product manager to our team, and we'd love to be connected with any qualified candidates you might know. And if you can't help us with recruiting, we'd like to ask you to try out Predictable for yourself. Whether your friends are thinking about having kids, or if your kids have just graduated from college and don't know what plan to go on, or if you can think of any other crazy situation to throw at us, we'd love to handle it for you. Next up, I'd like to bring up Sixpence. But again, please join us on the conversation on Slack where you can meet our founders one-on-one. -on -one. Sixpence is building an amazing platform that's changing the way that we give to the charitable organizations we care about. Chris, would you please take the stage? Hi there, I'm Christopher, the founder and CEO of Sixpence. And today I'm going to be sharing with you about how we're changing the giving experience in community settings. First, let's talk about that giving experience. Odds are over the last 12 months, you were probably one of the millions of Americans who bought or perhaps even sold some sort of product that you didn't really care about to support a cause they actually did care about, probably quite deeply. Or perhaps you're one of the lucky few who got to pay through an online giving form instead, however clunky or long it may have been. Either way, you're familiar with the fact that our giving experience itself is kind of detached from the rest of our community experience, and it's kind of transactional. Frankly, to date, we've treated giving like e-commerce, or in the instance of product fundraisers, just commerce itself. And that's resulted in pretty horrific success rates. The problem is we've built giving solutions for fundraisers, but we haven't built a good, smooth experience for the contributors and communities behind them. So we took a step back and we looked at, we asked what that would actually look like, a community-centric giving platform. And it resulted in sixpence platform where the relationship and community is emphasized over just getting you from A to B over the transactional experience, where participation and contribution are the values, where giving is a simple, ongoing background part of people's daily lives. Basically, we built this platform around two questions. Why do people give and why don't people give? We've got answers to both. Why do people give? We give because we all share a deep yearning for community, belonging, ownership, involvement with others and things we care about. Uh, and so we built a giving experience that's not centered around donate buttons and giving forms, but instead community. We first are invited to join a community and from there on a rolling basis can see needs, posts, updates as a part of that community. As for why people don't give, cost and futility thinking. Rolled up into one summary statement, I didn't give to cause X because what I could afford to give wasn't enough to matter. Of course, what anyone can give matters. So we took technology that's been popularized in investment and savings to kind of 
take the dollar signs out of giving decisions. Roundups is one example of that. Instead of choosing to give $20, people are just prompted to give roundups on their daily purchases. Would you be willing to support our school with roundups on your daily purchases when you buy gas, groceries, coffee? Simply, it's an easier ask. And it also makes support of that cause a background part of their daily lives. We take a 4.9% fee on our uh, as our platform fee, which keeps our incentives aligned with those of our users. Basically, we don't make money unless they make money. Our beachhead markets are religious communities and schools. Both of these are fairly concentric. Religious communities tend to fundraise pretty similarly across the board, same thing for schools. Um, and they also represent a very large market. About $100 billion was raised this last year. Additionally, they've been kind of hard hit by COVID-19. So they're frantically looking for new giving solutions to help their communities continue to be involved, even if not as much physically. We, speaking of market size, that $100 billion there, $292 billion was donated in total by individuals in 2019. This, in the long run, gives us a pretty big pool to swim in. However, it's important to note that we're kind of on the ground level here. Less than 10% of giving last year happened online. It was surprising to me to learn as well, and I'm in the space. Um, but that shows that there's significant opportunity for growth, because I can tell you for a fact that my generation will not be writing paper checks or mailing cash as our donations over the next 30 years. We launched a pilot, uh, our platform about three weeks ago and are running pilots with five churches right now, which are in the process of onboarding roughly 300 members between them all. Additionally, each church on average has referred one other church to us, showing strong potential for network effects. Our team covers all the bases, from sales, marketing and product, analytics, software development, we've got it all covered. Additionally, we bring a wide depth of industry expertise and networks. Uh, I myself came up with Sixpence while I was fundraising. I fundraised as a professional, as a development director, and as an amateur fundraising for community causes. We get it, we understand what works, and we understand what really doesn't. Right now, we're raising a $400,000 seed round, which will put towards continued development and sales and marketing resources. We expect this will lead, will lead to 1,000 communities onboarded and 50,000 uh, users by the end of 2021. Our target is reaching 1.5 million ARR by end of year 2021. Think about your own communities and how you participate. And especially in light of the last six months, what's that participation look like, especially financially? Right now, a new solution to giving and community participation is more needed than ever. So I would love to invite you to participate in our efforts with Sixpence, whether as a, a participant in our seed round or by sending a cause our way. Thank you. We'd love to have you on board. Next up, I'd like to bring up NODT. But before I do, please again, join us on Slack. There's a link around. There on Slack for this special community, you can talk to our founders, get to meet them one-on-one -on -one in a special Zoom room, see their pitch decks. You can also connect to other investors. So please join us on Slack. Alec Tan and InnoDT have built some amazing things about bringing transparency on the blockchain. Alec, would you please take the stage? Wealth creation is exploding within fintech. New financial products are introduced to the market every day. However, traditional strategies are underperforming and many savvy portfolios are looking for new ways to generate alpha. Along comes crypto products, the beacon of opportunity for traders and investors, the new frontier for wealth creation. My name is Alec Tan, CEO and co-founder of InnoDT. We're a data aggregation platform delivering on-chain analytics and deep insights for quant funds. Quant funds are the largest market participants trading in the space today. However, trading in the space is not without risk. Let me tell you a story about Mike, who is a quantitative trader. He noticed a huge price jump in a particular asset of over 50% recently during a 24 hour period. After some research, this was because Andreessen Horowitz had invested into this asset that over its time gained 1600% more overall. But it was too late for Mike to take position on this asset. Mike asked himself, why were the other market players blinded until this asset value jumped? Are there earlier signals? 
how can I better anticipate this huge adjustment earlier to make a difference? The reason is clear. Mike and other quant funds are applying old school Wall Street strategies. They're using price-based data, all with yesterday's historical information. And because Mike was working with yesterday's historical information, he's missed the market timing and validation. This happens all the time. Today's demand for better solution and better data is frustrating. And this isn't just a problem for Mike, it's a problem for the entire industry. NODT is delivering exactly what this market needs, sophisticated on-chain transparency. Our customers are able to track activities inside and outside of various exchanges, so Mike no longer is wasting hundreds of hours a month spending millions of dollars in additional resources to track and monitor accounts, social sentiment, and activities outside of crypto exchanges. Not only are we delivering this radical transparency, we do it faster, more reliably, and with useful visualizations. Just as the Bloomberg terminal that analyzes financial market data, our platform analyzes blockchain data, providing block by block, address by address, behavioral insights designed by our dev team with over 20 years of experience. Let's take a quick look under the hood. Here we are at Etherscan, a blockchain explorer that looks at account transactions. Mike notes that this account has over 300 transactions. So it would be difficult for him to look at all the rows of letters and numbers in a short amount of time. So visually, those transactions are here in the yellow dot. But our sophisticated assessment also uncovers that most of these transactions are coming from one source of fund, the account in blue. And that the search report shows that the owner also has these two other addresses in red to be able to likely to be the same address, resulting in identifying real accounts and filtering out the noise. After seeing this output, Mike is exporting our data set to backtest and feed into his own application, which highlights the magnitude in the value of our data delivery solution. We're able to see the entire history from the source of funds to perform real-time monitoring or any account tracking going forward. This can be used for reporting purposes. This can help to understand accounts, inflows, and outflows, and to even see if current active users who may be sitting on a lot of assets are hidden whales to really pay attention to. Make no mistake, customers are really reaching out to us directly from word of mouth. With my background of 10 years of hands-on in finance, management, consulting, and licensing, our traction has barely begun and already $10,000 monthly recurring revenue, signed over 10 MOUs in our pipeline, and a sales funnel with over 30 separate use cases ready for prompt execution and on-time delivery. This is a big deal. The quant fund vertical I've been talking about has been growing 100% year over year. And for us to be able to capture blockchain data and execute sophisticated on-chain analysis, we're hitting an $11 billion market, comprised of eight customer profiles so far, with more customer profiles left untapped. Our team built this business where others have failed. We have over 30 years of combined experience in finance, software engineering, and data analytics, including members from crypto brands such as Neo Global Capital, Draper, and others. Currently, we're raising a $1.2 million seed round. Right now, more than 60% is committed and deposited. We're looking to sell faster within our current pipeline, onboard new customers, and achieve 100,000 MRR with these funds. With how fast we're moving, investors' interest has been rising, so we plan to close by the end of the quarter. If you're like Mike, you recognize that old tools do not work in this new market. Sophisticated transparency is desperately needed, and customers are already paying for our deep insights. InnoDT is head of the game and ready to win big. Connect with me. My name is Alec Tan, and we are InnoDT. Thank you. Next up, I'd like to bring up Vestalize. But again, before I do, please check Slack, meet founders, meet other investors, check a link around. We'd be excited to meet you there. Now, Vestalize has done some amazing things around options trading and bringing transparency to what's been an otherwise relatively difficult market to track. Tyler, would you please say hello to everybody in the show? Hello, my name is Tyler Chanelli. I'm a professional money manager and options trader. I've been trading stocks and options for 20 years and all my love and passion for the stock market has now translated into the creation of Vestalize. Vestalize is a cloud-based investment management tool 
that simplifies portfolio tracking on options trades. With the rising tide of millennial traders and new technologies that have been developed in the past 10 years, options trading is growing at unprecedented levels. According to the Options Industry Council, options volume has increased 43% between April 2019 and April 2020. There's more than 50 million retail investors in the United States, of which over 10% are currently trading options in their portfolio, resulting in a $10 billion a year market. Trading options is now more accessible to the mass retail investing public like we've never seen before, and Vestalize is here to capitalize on it. Now, current portfolio management systems, they lack adequate tracking on closed option trades. The top brokerage firms that we know and love, they do a lot of things really well, but they've overlooked this critical closed options tracking aspect, resulting in lost income potential, wasted time, and confusion and misunderstanding with trades. This here is a live example of a long vertical call spread on Peloton. It shows the chaos in a brokerage account statement. You may be asking, what were the trade details? How did it perform? Well, as you can see, Vestalize has taken this genuine trade example and create a simple and clear process showing the net profit, ROI, along with several other important investment variables. We've identified a painful gap in the marketplace on providing complete trade tracking and analytics of not only open, but closed trades, and not just any trades, but complex multi-leg option spreads, including buys, sells, assignments, rolls, dividends, splits, expired transactions, and really the whole storybook of a trade. The backbone of Vestalize stems from our trading log. It runs a proprietary algorithm that automatically organizes, groups, calculates, and tracks over 20 of the top stock and option trading strategies, all through a private, secure, and scalable infrastructure. Our mission at Vestalize is to bridge the gap for retail investors and help them achieve more success in the financial markets through powerful reports, metrics, and analytics. In addition, we have a supplemental e-learning platform to help bring financial education to the tens of millions of investors who are just getting into the market. Vestalize generates revenue through a monthly or annual subscription software as a service business model. We have two levels of our product, Core and Core Plus. We project over the next five years that we'll exceed 50,000 active subscribers, which will result in an annual recurring revenue of at least $20 million. We've successfully built our MVP, obtained 30 presale customers, have over 100 people on our waiting list. We've generated $5,000 in pre-launch revenue, and we're receiving tremendous feedback and validation from our early adopter users who are very excited about using this product. Our major competitive advantage is our laser focus on self-directed retail traders. All of these competitors, they target commercial clients and charge a minimum of $20,000 a year on average. We're able to provide the retail investing public with a more robust option tracking capability for as low as $47 a month. Vestalize is built with an accomplished executive staff and an experienced product development team. And all of us here are dedicated to improving, simplifying, and streamlining portfolio tracking for retail investors. We're proud to announce the opening of our $500,000 seed investment round. Proceeds are going towards marketing for growth, business development to secure multiple partnerships, expanding our team to help further scale and build out our platform, and overall have the means necessary to execute on our plan of adding thousands of new users into Vestalize in the coming year. I would love to connect with you as a potential investor or joint venture partner in this unique opportunity Thank you for your time. I look forward to your questions. And remember, Vestalize. Smart investors have options. Last but certainly not least, I'd like to bring one of our alumni companies back up to the stage, which has gone through some interesting developments as their business has evolved. But again, one last time, please, Join us on Slack. This group is going to be going 
a while after this show. So it's going to be a durable community for you to be and revisit, not just to meet with our startups, but also to connect with larger communities. Anthony, can you come bring us up to speed on what's going on with SteadyPay? Hi, NextCube family. I'm Anthony Strike, the CEO of SteadyPay. It's good to be back. I want to talk today about small businesses and why so many of them fail. Is it because they couldn't get good product market fit? They didn't have good distribution? Competition was too strong? Ultimately, it comes down to they couldn't abide by the number one rule of small businesses. Don't run out of cash. Staying on top of cash flow is the most critical task a small business has, but it's really hard. A recent bank survey showed that 82% of small business failures were the result of poor cash flow management. Why is it so tough if it's so critical? Well, small businesses are dealing with a lot of manual processes and legacy technology, which make this a cumbersome process. They're also dealing with tools that are heavily gap focused, not cash focused, which can obscure how much money is really going in and out of their bank account. They're also dealing with bank products that have Crappy interest rates and low credit limits. I mean, have any of you checked the rate you're getting on that SVB money market account lately? Not good. That makes it tough to put your money to work for you. And finally, you're tracking balances and, and other things across multiple accounts and you have multiple stakeholders to report out to, all of which makes this a very tough chore. And as we all know, we sometimes just don't want to do our chores, but it's so critical here which is why small businesses need a single source of truth for cash that will automatically help them track, forecast, and optimize the way they use their cash. That's SteadyPay. We are that central source of truth that allows our customers to link their accounts to our platform and track key cash indicators like runway, burn, or to forecast cash and help them plan different scenarios. We also allow you to manually edit the data behind these forecasts so you can put in those one-offs that any automated tool might not pick up. And critically, we also add the ability to actually move your cash around, putting it into better banking products. We recently launched our Cash Optimizer product, which is essentially a bank agnostic sweep account, allowing small businesses to take any amount of cash from any bank and put it to better use. Right now, we're returning four times higher interest than the average money market account and almost 20 times higher interest than the average small business checking account. And that makes a difference for small businesses. We'll continue to add more financial products as we grow, and we can do that quickly and at scale because we are one of very few fintechs that have a direct integration with our bank partner, allowing us to access their core and payment rails directly. Our revenue model is kind of a mix of uh, SaaS and FinTech, sort of SaaS potatoes and FinTech gravy. We charge a monthly fee for the service and also make money on the assets that we hold on behalf of our customers. All of this totals up to be more than $1,400 in revenue per customer per year. And at 30 million businesses in the, small businesses in the United States, that is a comically large addressable market. So we're focusing in first on the customers for whom cash is the most critical and the most dynamic. Startups, we are a $2 billion industry all by ourselves. Now, how are we attacking this very competitive market? Well, we're already doing direct sales and are working out our process around email and LinkedIn and seeing good uptake there. We're also working through fractional CFOs and accountants who typically would be gatekeepers for a product like this, but who are actually happy to recommend products that add value to their customers. So we can come right through that gate. And finally, stakeholders like VCs or SMB focused companies who have a vested interest in making sure that small businesses handle their cash well. Underlying all this is a digital campaign that supports brand awareness and drives lead gen. So far, this has helped us have a successful launch of Cash Optimizer. As I mentioned, we launched it in March which was a great time to launch a product that was focused on small businesses and heavily interest rate dependent. So despite the difficult economic environment, we've seen this grow at double digits week over week, which is really exciting. We're also launching that big cash dashboard next month. We're excited about this. We've done more than 80 customer interviews to validate the inputs and pricing. 
We have five fractional CFOs and accountants already signed up to refer customers to us and more in the pipeline. And we have more than 100 customers already on the wait list. Our team is a mix of people with product, marketing, finance, and tech experience at some of the top companies in the world and also 12 different startups and small businesses between us. Our investors and advisors come from some of the top VCs, banks, fintechs, and startups, all helping us to tackle this problem. Our ask today is if you work at a startup or small business, let us know what you're doing for cash management now and tell us what we can build to help make it better. And of course, please introduce us to your finance teams. If you're an investor, let us talk to your portfolio companies. Let us help them make sure that that check you just wrote them is being used wisely. And as we uh, move into the back half of the year, we'll be ramping up our seed round, so get in touch with us then. And finally, anybody else, just introduce us to your friends who run their own businesses. We wanna make sure that they're putting every dollar to the best use possible. Thank you. That's a wrap, everyone. Thank you. For those that made it through this entire show, hello, congratulations. I really appreciate you sticking around to the end and seeing all these amazing stories. It doesn't end here. Um, that Slack group, which you may have heard about through this entire time, is alive and well and is gonna be going long after. So please join us there for a conversation with other investors, but more importantly, our founders. They're gonna be there, ready, waiting to talk to you. Uh, and so you can do this at a time that may make sense for you. That's it, I'm gonna end how I started uh, with, with a huge appreciative thank you, um, one to you for joining us today. But then secondly, I, I wanna give a shout out to my entire Next Cube team for putting this event on. We've been doing virtual before it was a thing. Uh, so, uh, and, and a special shout out to my right hand, Karen Quackenbush, who um, has made all these details possible and puts up with all of my stuff. So again, thank you, thank you all, and we'll see you out there on Slack.